Welcome to another chapter of BIS Talks. In a way, this is an extremely critical chapter since it talks about one of the basic survival needs of humanity. Modern societies need water for so many purposes, for domestic, commercial, industrial and agricultural usage. Our water resources can be widely segmented into two categories, surface water and ground water. Their efficient management has emerged as a critical and immediate need for India. Uneven distribution of water poses a grave problem for our nation. That is where the Bureau of Indian Standards has been playing a critical role by setting standards to follow through its Water Resources Department. Let's first hear from Mr. R.K. Jain, who is also holding the post of Chairman CWC. He will acquaint us with the importance of setting standards in this domain. Standardization is very important for not only bringing uniformity in the procedures, but also to have quality control. I congratulate BIS for striving hard in formulating the standards and covering almost all the aspects of the water resources. It is very important for any country to have its own standards, particularly in the field of water resources, depending upon local geography and other local conditions. Subject of water resources covers aspects like irrigation, drinking water, water for industrial use, planning and design of water resources projects, interstate issues, environmental issues, etc. Standards are needed for wholesome and organized development of any nation and also to resolve conflicts. There are 18 sectional committees in the Water Resources Division Council, WRDC in short. These committees are playing a vital role in this endeavor BIS. WRDC advises the new subject areas to be taken up for formulation of standards, keeping in view the national needs and priorities. It also advises on the matters relating to R&D needed for the establishment of the standards or their revision. Let us hear from a senior BIS official on how standards are developed and the overall working of the technical committees. The Water Resources Department has formulated over 450 standards. Over hundreds of experts put their heads together in this extensive consultative process of standard formulation, which is based on transparency, consensus building, among stakeholders. The areas of work under Water Resources Department can be broadly categorized into surface water resources, groundwater investigation and management, river training works, and planning and management of water resources projects. Surface water resources is a big focus area. Within that, we work on dams and its appurtenances, such as spillways, weirs, gates, etc. We also work on reservoirs, lakes and canals, instrumentation of hydraulic structures and geological investigations. Another important category pertains to river training works covering structures like embankments, groins, revetments, etc. Lastly, we deal with standards on management of water resources projects. Here we developed standards such as progress report and completion report of river valley projects. We also formulate safety codes in construction, operation and maintenance of river valley projects. Beyond this, we also work on subjects such as estimating unit rate for civil works, etc. Now that we know the functional aspects of how the technical committees operates, Let's take a closer look at their areas of operation. Dams, barrages and weirs are man-made barrier structures built across a stream or a river that stops and regulates the flow of water in controlled fashion. Indian standards ensure that dams built in India are safe, 
economical and durable and are fit and functional to serve the nation. Let's hear about this in detail from our expert. Let's talk about the Indian standards for dams and canals in our country. IS 6512, this is one of the important standard which gives the design criteria for any solid gravity dam. Design analysis is a crucial part for any dam before its construction. We understand that this stability analysis takes into account the several critical load combinations. The standard gives seven different load combinations for it. They are mainly the dead load, reservoir and tail water loads, uplift pressure, earthquake forces, earth and silt pressure, ice pressure, wind pressure, wave pressure and thermal loads. We have one more important standard. IS 11855. This is design and use of rubber seals for hydraulic gates. This standard gives the recommendations. The standard covers six different type of seals depending upon their shapes. They are namely angle shaped seal, flat seal, music note seal, double caisson seals, double bulb seals and corner seals. It also lays six important parameters to control the quality checks comprising of tensile and elongation test show hardness test, water absorption, weather impact test, and its materials. The standard also covers an important requirement of cladded seals. The cladded seals are fluorocarbon cladding is done to reduce frictional forces. The standard also gives the test requirements of adhesion test. Dams also need to have certain appurtenant structures to enable them to discharge their operational functions safely and effectively. A number of standards are in place to ensure this. For instance, this is a spillway. Spillways are passages for letting out waters safely when the reservoir overflows. IS 5186 and IS 6934 covers the design criteria for different types of spillways. Dam as a structure is not alone. We have many more standards on appurtenant structures. IS 11527 is a standard that deals with the structural design of energy dissipators for any the spillways. Energy dissipators are important structures to protect the erosion on the downstream part of the any dam. Or spillways. The design of downstream protection works or energy dissipators below hydraulic structures occupy a vital place in the design and construction of dams, barrages and outlets. The standard covers hydraulic jump type, silting basin and bucket type energy dissipators below spillways and outlet works founded on rock. We see that in the standard the structural design of flow sap consists of the following steps. Determination of uplift forces, Details of anchorages into bedrock, that is, diameter, number, and spacing of anchor bars. Determination of the length of considering dislodgement of rock mass against uplift force. Working out details of slab reinforcement. IS 15058. This is another standard on PVC water stops. These water stops are used at transverse contraction joints for use in machinery and concrete dams. The contraction joints in machinery and concrete dams provide passage through the dam which unless sealed would permit the leakage from the reservoir to the downstream phase and this could be harmful to the structure. To check this leakage, water stops are installed in the joints adjacent to the upstream phase. The standard takes care of the quality of this product and covers 12 different parameters to check the quality. Right from its material, aging, weather impact, weight, water absorption and its dimensions. The standard is BIS certifiable and presently we are having six number of BIS license against this standard. Water release from dams may also be controlled using gates and shutters. The Bureau of Indian Standards Code IS 13623 criteria for choice of gates and hoists provides the basic classification of gates. IS 5620 gives recommendations for structural design criteria for low held slide gates. BIS has developed a vast array of Indian standards for planning, design, construction and maintenance of various types of dams and their components. Before we move on to take on to the next category, let's take a brief look at some key standards within this area.
now for our next sub category under surface water is reservoirs and lakes a reservoir is a man made lake that is created when a dam is built on a river they are different from natural lakes in these river water gets blocked by dams and are collected behind the dam creating a reservoir we already know reservoirs are used to generate hydropower they also have a host of other benefits first during seasonal high flow of rivers they limit the amount of water allowed to continue downstream through this reservoirs help control flooding secondly during dry seasons water is released from the reservoir through canals this enables farmers to water their crops and industries to function without interruption do you know what's the most common problem with reservoirs you might not want to believe it but it's as simple as evaporation a huge quantity of water is lost from reservoirs through evaporation however substantial quantity of water can be conserved by control of this evaporation we have a standard is14654 minimizing evaporation losses from reservoir which stipulates the methods and guidelines for reduction of evaporation losses from water bodies with special reference to control of evaporation with chemical retardants IS6939 is another standard that provide methods for determination of evaporation from reservoirs. BIS standard also covers other measures available for control of evaporation like the installation of floating solar panels on the reservoir. If you go to any reservoir or even a natural lake you will observe that the water there is very still. Due to this bits of sand, rock, dirt and other material called sediment sink to the bottom leaving the water quite clear but over time this sediment builds up greatly reducing the capacity of those lakes and reservoirs IS6518 is a standard stipulating guidelines on control of sedimentation in reservoirs IS13665 is a standard that stipulates method for assessment of reservoir sedimentation the sediment entering into a storage reservoir gets deposited progressively with the passage of time this causes the bed level near the dam to rise and reduces the capacity of the reservoir several methods are in use for predicting sediment distribution in reservoirs for design purposes either the empirical area reduction method or the area increment method may be used IS5477 part 2 lays down methods for computing the sediment yield and for predicting the probable sediment distribution in the reservoir. Let's hear about this in detail from our expert. ID Rurki since his earlier version as University of Rurki has been involved in the planning, design and construction related activities of major water sources projects such as Bhakra Dam, Hirakun Dam and Tehri Dam in the country. Research inputs from academic and research institutions are appropriately incorporated in the NS standards and guidelines prepared by Bureau of Indian Standards and are at par with international standards. Government of India has focused on river rejuvenation, water conservation and water reuse. Thus, there is a need of revisiting the existing standards and introducing new standard to meet such requirement for the health of existing water bodies and availability of safe water water from reservoirs barrages are released through canals which have an important role to play in india's rural economy this released water is further utilized for irrigation in far flung areas bis have developed the standard IS6531 which gives design requirements for canal held regulators IS9447 gives guidelines for assessment of seepage losses in canals IS4701 is a standard for earthwork on canals standards have also been framed to address various kinds of seepage losses in canals through various types of surface lining such as stone pitching concrete slabs and tiles burnt clay tiles bitumen lining and polyethylene films here is the list of some important standards
Let's hear about this in detail from our expert. We have another important part of our water resource sectors, canals. Canals are the major sources of irrigation in our country. As you all understand, apart from design, layout and planning of canals, number of standards have been framed on lining of canals. Let's talk about few of them. IS 9698. This standard is one of the important standards which gives lining of canals with PE films, that is polyethylene films. The standard lays down the practice for use of PE film as canal lining, preventing the seepage losses and improving the velocity of flow. The standard covers both the low density type and the high density type PE films according to the requirements of IS 2508 and IS 10889. The standard specifies laying techniques in the field, preparation of the subgrade before laying, PE film, different techniques for jointing of films, for example, overlapping through adhesive, hot bitumen and hot sealing. It also gives or guides us with do's and don'ts with the use of this PE film as a canal lining. We have one more important standard, IS 10646. The standard deals with the canal lining of cement concrete tiles. The standard is BI certifiable for cement concrete tiles as canal lining. It gives material requirements for tiles, giving the reference to use different cement and requirements for aggregates conforming to IS 383. The standard specifies the dimensions of tiles and gives the test to check the quality of tiles through its flexor test. The flexor test has given the minimum breaking load requirement from 18 to 41 kg for different thickness. Now for hydrometry, another emerging and critical area. BIS has also developed a number of standards in the domain in terms of measurement of liquid flow and discharge in open channels and closed conduits by various methods. Here is the list of some important standards. Insoluble materials like silt, sand and gravel transported by the streams creates problems in the operation of many river valley projects. Therefore, to have adequate knowledge of the movement of sediments, a systematic sampling of the sediment is required. IS 3917 Scoop Type Bed Material Samplers is a standard that specifies the functional requirements like the sampler should be able to cut a layer of 8 cm to 10 cm thickness. It also specifies performance test requirements and material to be used for the manufacture of various parts of the sampler. Other important standards under hydrometry are IS 16571, measurement of liquid flow in open channels, moving both method. This standard specifies methods for measurement of discharge in large rivers. The standard describes equipment requirements, selection of site, method of computation, and also contains a step-by-step -step example computation by moving both method. An IS-16138 is a standard which gives guidelines for the design, selection and use of electromagnetic current meters for measurement of liquid velocity in open channels. BIS has also taken an active role in the ISO committees in the field of hydrometry. Let's get more clarity on this subject matter from our expert. BIS is working in close liaison with ISO in the area of standardization on hydrometry. BIS holds the secretariat of the committee ISO TC113 on hydrometry and its subcommittees SC1, Velocity Area Methods and SC6, Sediment Transport since the inception of the committee in the year 1964. Indian experts actively contribute in the formulation of ISO standards on hydrometry and hold prominent leadership positions such as chair, convener and project leaders. BIS has adopted many ISO standards on hydrometry to align with the latest technologies as well. Currently, India is going through a severe groundwater crisis 
This is largely due to severe over extraction and groundwater contamination covering nearly 60% of all districts in India. Besides, recharge of groundwater is slow as a large quantity of surface runoffs gets washed to rivers and oceans. To address these concerns, BIS has come up with various standards. These cover many critical aspects of groundwater resources, related investigations, water harvesting and recharge of groundwater. Excessive use of groundwater for various applications has resulted in lowering of groundwater levels causing adverse environmental impacts. Artificial recharge due to groundwater refers to augmentation of groundwater resources using surplus surface water available. In this regard, there is a standard IS 15792 artificial recharge to groundwater that provides various techniques and methods of artificial recharge by modifying the natural movement of the surface water. The standard provides guidelines for the basic requirements of our artificial recharge projects and its planning such as identification of the areas, requirements for technical inputs like remote sensing studies, soil infiltration studies, hydrological studies, etc. In terms of groundwater resources, there are a lot of many other important areas where BIS has developed standards like IS15797 guidelines for roof top rainwater harvesting and IS15897 which provides the specifics of surface geophysical surveys for hydrogeological studies. For a detailed list, please check the program of work under WRD 3 Groundwater and Related Investigations Sectional Committee. India is the largest user of groundwater in the world. About one-fourth of the global groundwater withdrawal occurs in India. Hence, there is a dire necessity to standardize the methods and procedures for survey, assessment, monitoring and management of groundwater. Standards provide technical specifications, enabling guidelines and precise criteria for the activities. Standards also help to reduce errors, facilitate problem solving and also increase the reliability and effectiveness of outputs. Standards in some aspects of groundwater like geophysics, artificial recharge and also groundwater measurement have already been developed by BIS. A few new subjects have also been taken up for standardization. Just to mention a few, guidelines for aquifer mapping, mathematical modeling of groundwater, impact assessment techniques for artificial recharge schemes, interaction of groundwater and surface water assessment, guidelines for surface runoff harvesting using small structures, these standards will help in a long way to achieve the desired results in groundwater sector. Evidently, these water resources, projects, demand meticulous planning before execution. This is to make sure that adverse impacts do not outweigh the benefits expected from the projects. To address this, BIS has developed standards IS15845 and IS15 15442 for environment management plan and parameters for environmental impact assessment of water resource projects. Here is the list of some important standards. PIS has framed standards to cover every bit corner over vast spectrum in river valley projects. There are also guidelines for a vast spectrum of areas within the sector. For instance, presentation of project and progress report, completion report of river valley projects, safety codes in construction, operation and maintenance estimating unit rate for civil works, measurement of works in construction of dams and appurtenant structures, etc.
outbreak of fire in the river valley projects can cause extensive damages to the buildings and equipments. For this, we have IS-10386, Construction, Operation and Maintenance of River Valley Projects, Part 7, Fire Safety Aspects. This standard lays down the fire safety requirements in the river valley projects. The standard is intended to be of use during the construction, operation as well as maintenance periods for the fire safety of river valley projects. It covers fire safety aspects of dams, canals, tunnels, etc., buildings, forest, hydropower stations and their allied equipment. We need to talk about another important category, that of river training works. This involves structures that are constructed around the river to guide the flow of water, prevent erosion, to protect the embankment and to stabilize the structures. Guide banks are protective or training embankments constructed at the side of a weir, bridge, etc. to guide the river through the waterway provided in the structure. What you see now is groins. Their purpose is to interrupt water flow and to limit the movement of sediment from shore to sea. Likewise, there are other structures like levees, fish pass and revetment. We understand that flood is another important aspect in the water resource sector. PIS also caters the problem of floods and rivers through its sectional committee WRD 22, that is flood management, erosion management and diversion works. Let's talk about one of the standard, IS 13877, that is planning and design of fish passes. The standard covers the details for location, planning, design of fish pass construction in barrages or diversion structures. While investigating and planning the fish passes, standard helps in identification and collection of data like types of fish, its normal swimming speed, locations, amount of fish, minimum water requirements, etc. The standard covers five different types of fish lock structures and seven types of fish ladder constructions. For example, inclined shoot type, paired obstacle fish pass, alternate obstacle pool type, weir type, etc. The standard also covers the selection criteria. BIS has also framed one of the important standards for estimating the flood damages, IS 13739. The standard gives the guidelines for estimation of flood damages. It is one of the significant standards to provide scientific procedure for collection of data and methods to convert the direct and indirect losses other than human life in monetary terms. The standard gives an approach for collecting data to estimate the damage and has primarily categorized these kind of damages into four types. They are agricultural crops, private and public properties, business and other secondary activities, spread of epidemic, health and loss of livestock, fear, anxiety and distress. As we have seen, Water Resources Department has brought out standards covering every aspect of water resource management from planning to design, construction and maintenance of river valley projects in subjects ranging from hydrometry to geological investigations, river protection, construction safety, environmental impact assessment and flood control. To address the various emerging challenges and keeping in view the latest technological developments, BIS is striving to frame standards on areas which are need of the hour. We are considering development of standards to prolong the life of dams by addressing silt control and silt removal techniques. It is one of the major areas of concern today. To regulate the distribution of water as per need, our committees are working on piped irrigation network, specifying the process, testing and material quality. We are also working on new cost-effective areas like that of CFR dams, piano key weirs, roller compacted, RCC dams, etc. Considering the immense damage caused by floods, subjects like flood forecasting, real-time reservoirs inflow, forecasting with neural algorithms and other computational techniques are being considered. To conserve our dwindling groundwater resources, our committees are working on standardization of unconventional measures for groundwater harvesting. 
standardization in the field of performance monitoring of hydraulic structures to increase the construction life, cost-effective maintenance, as well as to improve the efficiency of water use is another important area being looked into. Another area under consideration is environmental impact assessment of river valley projects. Besides, BIS is committed to continuously revise the existing standards to incorporate the latest technological advancements and ensure that Indian standards are at par with international standards. That's all for now in this chapter of BIS Talks. To know more about the programs and details of the BIS WRD department and its functions, you can visit BIS website. The BIS e-governance portal Manak Online provides a comprehensive view of its activities including on standardization. This portal serves BIS technical committee members and also other users of Indian standards. Filters to view the aspect-wise Indian standards classified based on test methods, product specifications, codes of practices, etc. is also available. The list of Indian standards relevant to various ministries and departments can also be accessed online. Details of published Indian standards and draft standards open for public commenting are also available. Proposals can also be submitted through the portal to make new Indian standards. Details about the technical committees, members and their affiliations through Manak Online are just one click away.